Spaniard Maverick Vinales was a major topic in the 2021 MotoGP season. After he got on Yamaha's nerves so much that they suspended him. What was next for Vinales? Not a single person was sure, not even himself. Vinales isn't just another rundown racer, but a multi-time Rookie of the Year and the 2013 Moto3 champion. He was an extraordinary racer, so much so that Yamaha recruited him, but his actions left both his fans and Yamaha shocked to the core. So what was it that Vinales did to infuriate Yamaha so much to the point that they would suspend him with immediate effect? Why was he not bothered? And what was next for Vinales? We'll cover more on this later as we go into the video, so stay tuned to the end to discover the truth that lay behind it all. Born in 1995, Vinales started competitive racing in Mini Moto when he was only three years old. He then moved to motocross before joining circuit racing in 2002 and competing in the 50cc Catalan Championship. He then had other prosperous sessions with Metra kit bikes for the 70cc class. He was the Catalan Champion in 2007 for the 125cc class then did the same in 2008 and also won the Mediterranean Trophy. Vinales also participated in selected events in 2008 with the Aprilia RS125R in the championship at the German IDM 125 GP, where he achieved 7th place. In 2009, Vinales rose to the 125 GP Buckler Series as a member of Team Blossom's BQR, where he collaborated with Miguel Oliveira. Vinales was Rookie of the Year at the end of the season after coming in second place behind Alberto Moncayo by just four points in the championship. He was on the podium four successive times during the season and had a triumph at Jerez. Vinales and Oliveira moved to different teams after Blossoms in 2010 and fiercely competed for the championship. Despite being victorious twice in Albacete, Oliveira had four wins and two second places. However, Vinales still claimed the championship by just two points. He was lucky though because Oliveira crashed in one of the races in Albacete. For the season of 2011, Vinales joined the World Championship for the 125cc class and collaborated with Sergio Gadea. He was impressive in Valencia during the pre-season testing, then finished in ninth position in the Qatar Grand Prix. He had to retire at Jerez after brake failure then finished fourth in Estoril, where Joan Zarco narrowly grabbed the podium from him with a 0.002 seconds margin between them at the finish line. Vinales redeemed himself in Le Mans two weeks later, coming in third after a hectic battle throughout the whole race with Nicolas Terrell. He cut inside Terrell after he made a mistake at the penultimate corner and won by 0.048 seconds. After his win at 16 years old, he became one of the youngest victorious riders at the Grand Prix, falling behind Marco Melandri and Scott Redding. Three more victories for the season allowed him to complete his rookie season in third position in the World Championship and receive the Rookie of the Year honors. He was title favorite for the season of 2012 in the Moto3 Championship. Vinales was victorious in the season's initial five races but was not consistent, with several crashes putting him behind Sandro Cortese. For 2013, he joined Team Calvo and rode beside Ana Carrasco. Vinales had his first two wins with the team at rounds three and four at Jerez de la Frontera in Spain and the Le Mans French Grand Prix. He should have won the later races as he was the leader in Aragon, San Marin and Phillip Island, but Alex Rins overtook him for all events. Finally, Vinales managed to claim the Moto3 Championship, with Rins finishing behind him in second place as runner-up. Vinales was a Moto2 rookie in 2014 and yet again won the Rookie of the Year award and claimed victory in four races. He then rose to MotoGP in the next year with Team Suzuki X-Star. He received the Rookie of the Year honors again before winning Suzuki's first win since 2007, including his win at the 2016 British MotoGP. Vinales joined Movistar Yamaha MotoGP in 2017 and partnered with none other than Valentino Rossi. He dominated the testings before the season, then won the French GP and his first two races for the year, but the team struggled with a low grip that made the second part of the season difficult. He finally came in third position overall, but the challenges progressed in 2018. Vinales, however, was the one that put an end to Yamaha's longest losing streak after winning in Australia. 2019 was a slow year for him at the start, after getting to the podium in the initial seven races. 
things got better for him after a victory in Assen, which kicked off a spectacular second part of the season. He claimed third position in the championship after five podiums and a victory in Malaysia. 2020 gave him hope for victory, as he was a contender from the start, thanks to winning two second places in Jerez and a win at the Emilia Romana GP. However, he was inconsistent in his form and unable to keep up with promising qualifying sessions, making him fall behind in the title race, which left him in sixth position in the championship. 2021 was his fifth year with Yamaha, which began remarkably with a win at the opening round. But the relationship went south from that moment on due to unforeseen circumstances. Yamaha announced that Vinales would leave Yamaha at the end of the season, 24 hours from the Assen podium. The announcement surprised everyone because it meant he would be leaving one year earlier than planned. Yamaha sacked him with immediate effect after he overrevved his engine in Austria. Maverick Vinales in trouble. By the time the 2021 MotoGP Championship continued at Silverstone, Maverick was nowhere to be seen. Yamaha had had enough of him. But what exactly happened for Yamaha to make such a decision? Yamaha suspended Vinales from the MotoGP after they realized that he'd been riding the M1 in low gears at the Styrian MotoGP for five laps and was even over revving it, which created a threatening engine failure. Vinales was frustrated because of his inconsistent performance in the seasons after he had won the Qatar opener. Then afterward, he was last in Saxon ring. What a disappointment. After the loss, Vinales criticized the M1's low competitiveness. While on the other hand, insiders blamed him after stating that his performance dropped and put him at the back of the grid after he crashed in pre-race qualifying. Vinales was not just frustrated, but also grew disinterested in Yamaha because of their lack of concern for his suggestions, which was made worse after his teammate, Fabio Quattararo, received good results while riding the same bike. Yamaha started to turn their backs on him, which left Vinales with no choice but to seek other alternatives to try and get another ride for the 2022 MotoGP season, which luckily fell into place for him. Vinales also blamed the engineers after they replaced the clutch on his M1 when he stopped at a red flag, even after he told them not to do so. He later stalled at the warm-up laps and had to begin from the pits. His frustrations, combined with two penalties for violating the track limits, which he claimed to have not been warned about, made him take out his frustration on the bike. Should he have taken out his frustration on a bike? Maverick's actions were more serious than you would think, and here's why. The results were highs and lows, but Vinales was still in seventh position in the standings, which, combined with Fabio's efforts, were enough to put Yamaha three points behind Ducati Armada in the championship. Yamaha was eager to claim. Taking out Vinales wasn't an advantage to Yamaha, even before considering the ongoing headache of how to fill two seats for the four-way lineup in the next season, let alone in the middle of the year while still battling for a title. The decision to suspend him from the Yamaha factory team was made at the board level, showing just how angry they were at Vinales for messing with their reputation, and they wouldn't think twice about punishing him. So what happened next after Vinales' suspension? There were rumors that Vinales would sign for Aprilia, rumors that came true not long after. Aprilia announced a deal with him, stating that Vinales would test the RSGP in Misano. He was given the last five rounds of the year to get used to the new machine and get ready for an important campaign for 2022 beside Alish Espargaro. Vinales was calm in 2022 when leaving Yamaha and walking away from the 2022 Yamaha deal that would cost him $10 million. Money was not his major concern though, and he knew his salary was expected to drop as he joined Aprilia because he had few options for the next season. But once again, fortune was on his side, as he would end up earning $2 million per year from his new team Aprilia. Interesting facts about Maverick Vinales. Number one, his hobby is snowboarding. Number two, his favorite pre-race song is Together We Made It. Number three, Lando Norris is a huge fan of Vinales and always plays as him in F1 2021. Number four, he has a dragon tattoo dedicated to his wife. Number five, he is in the millennial generation. Number six, his birth flower is carnation. Number seven, his life path is number one. Number eight, he was born in the year of the pig. Number nine, his zodiac sign is Capricorn. Maverick's personal life. Vinales is married to Rakael Sabira. They have a daughter named Nina Vinales. Maverick is a charitable person and has been working together with CharityStars.com a lot. They have joined hands to auction signature items he used in his races, where all the earnings go towards charity. His net worth. 
Maverick's net worth as of 2022 is estimated to be $10 million, with his salary and endorsements. Most of his income came from his fantastic racing career. With all the controversy in the year 2021 with Yamaha, and today with his new switch to Aprilia, he earns $2 million yearly as a MotoGP racer. So, as much as Aprilia cleared the air for Vinales by confirming him for the 2022 season at the Austrian MotoGP weekend, Vinales is still experiencing a lot of backlashes, and his reputation has been damaged. Do you think Vinales will gain favor in the eyes of the paddock again? Share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to check out Moto Plus for more fantastic videos. See you there!